new new love interest uh, get married two kids mm -hmm. never thought about getting a job never crossed I mean, you know, it, it crosses your mind, but, you know, I, I, a lot of people have these fears. And some people are scared of spiders. Some people are scared of heights. Some people wake up in the middle of the night scared of, you know, falling off a building or riding a bike with no brakes down the hill. I'm scared of a job, literally. Like, I, I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about what my life would be if I had to go to a job. And so that fear for me became a healthy motivation not to, um, you know, even let that enter into my mind as an option. And so it was always, you know, trying to anticipate and stay ahead of, you know, creating something to be able to generate enough cash flow. But also the fact of the matter is you also gotta, you know, kind of decrease your lifestyle and be willing to make the hard decisions um, for mentality of delayed gratification. And so that comes along with it as much as the success is, and, and, and not wavering from that and being okay. So, I mean, even to this day, one of my main principles and my, my, you know, what keeps me, you know, um, you know, in motion is, you know, the balance between being content and ambitious at the same time, which is a lot of people ask me, what's your secret? That's my secret because it's very difficult to do. You got to be content with where you are. If nothing changed in my life right now, I make another penny. I'm happy where I am right now. However, I get up every single day trying to get way more than I got today. And so that balance between, you know, being there, walk in your house and be happy and content with where you are, but still waking up with a level of, of aggression towards the world of capitalism um, is, is a balance that is, is a lot of people cannot strike. Yeah, you need to put that in a bottle and sell it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, or I'm gonna do it with you, and <laughs> you gonna sell it. <laughs> we, we, that's what we do, right? So we'll figure it out together. Yeah. So, um, so how long do you go between uh, exiting the real estate business and and its first your first journey and down that path until you uh, start? Cityscape housing. So between 2009, I, I, you know, my, I have a best friend named Ralph Cook who was in government affairs and um, for a, a law firm up in DC, he did federal lobbying. And so he had, you know, this background of relationships and understanding of government and earmarks and legislation uh, and relationships with a mayor. He had a contract with the city of Birmingham and uh, for lobbying. And so we, um, at the point of when the economy hit its lowest, came together in, in, a, in, a, in great timing and, and established uh, an offshoot of what he had already started as Handprint. We started Handprint Strategy Group. And basically what we did was we looked at, this is the time where Kasim um, came into office, the former mayor, Kasim Reed. We had a relationship with him. And what I think a lot of people did intuitively is that when the economy started tanking, they gravitated to what they felt they could get, you know, business out of the city and the relationships that were there. Um, well, we saw it as, you know, too competitive. There's, all of our friends were looking at the same pot of money and the same pot of opportunities. And I remember reading a book um, called A Blue Ocean Strategy. And it basically, the theory behind it is you want to find blue waters. You want to find, you know, non-shark infested competitive waters. Because if you can get to the blue waters and you're out in an area where the competitive landscape is low, you're more likely to thrive and succeed. And we were watching people, you know, try to figure out how to get with the city of Atlanta and get contracts and this, that, and the other. Uh, and those were red waters. Those were, those were shark infested people cannibalizing each other eating each other up the competitive landscape is high so we said we're gonna find you know other uh, opportunities that nobody pay attention to so we developed relationship with the mayors across the i-20 corridor and we cre started creating we took a book of business or a book of relationships from atlanta and started um you know maturing opportunities in these other second tier cities that nobody's paying attention to and so uh, those relationships with those mayors yielded us creating some public-private partnerships and being in, 
and water deals and infrastructure deals and and then you know also having contracts with you know the community development department or the uh you know city manager where initiatives or banner initiatives that they had they needed people to execute and implement them or develop them and so we, we built a practice off of that for uh about you know 10 years um strategy work and consulting work mainly serving the cities along the i-20 corridor the Birmingham's, the Columbia's, mm -hmm. and what have you, and you were able to sustain and thrive during that during that period of time. And so, did did you always know you were going to get back into real estate, or did you think that you were going to stay this course of the uh, strategy consultant? No, I never I never thought too far ahead into real estate. And, and to be honest with you, um, we we um, you know the the economy still was not thriving in real estate. You know through 2012 so it never occurred to me to get back into real estate and then there started to become this drumbeat of rob you need to put on your development hat get back in real estate and because we started seeing opportunities through our relationships with community development uh, departments in these cities and then so uh i, I kept saying man I don't, you know once you get skin up like that with personal guarantees and you lose a lot of money you go bankrupt you know, you just start to lose a little of your luster to get back into something that skins you up so bad. But, you know, opportunities started to come my way. And then I eventually said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to lay these principles down. I'm not going to be a slave to the business. And I'm not going to, I don't want to, I don't want to have capital that um, has, you know, we have to provide personal guarantees to. Some of this is willing our way into this, these situations, but that's exactly what began to happen. And we said, we're going to be, it's going to be capital led meaning that we're going to find you know good private capital because uh, we know that the opportunities and the the projects we can go source those based on our relationships and our you know you know kind of entrenchment into the marketplace of real estate so we led with capital and then we end up you know finding these projects that uh to serve the capital needs that were being deployed and so uh, it just, it was just, you know, being at the right time and then just bringing forward everything I'd ever learned and every relationship I'd ever made and treating people nicely and, and, and holding my word and developing a good reputation and being known to execute. Um, you know, it all just culminated into, you know, finding one project. So I, I knew if I found one project and I'm not. I never wanted to just build one house. I wanted to always, you know, get back into it with a project. I knew if I found one project that I could build a company around that one project and leverage that one project into the next. And that's exactly what started to happen uh, in 2017. And so you said you led with capital. How hard have you found it as a black man to raise capital? And is it any more difficult than if than what you've seen your white counterparts do? Yeah, I mean, it is. Um, I've seen people, my white counterparts, you know, go bankrupt multiple times and then go to the same bank and get a loan, you know, and so. Donald Trump. Yep, <laughs> precisely. Uh, There's a lot of Donald Trumps here, right. little Donald Trumps in Atlanta. Uh, and so I saw that happen all the time over and over again. Uh, so it is harder um, for us to raise capital. But, you know, at the same time, I'm not the one to sit there and say, you know, I'm a black entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur with, you know, like anybody else with challenges. And it's, again, it's really about overcoming those challenges, whether you're black or white. But yeah, in, in, inevitably, you, you start to see that things are, there's an inequity, um, but you either let that, you know, stop you or you just forge ahead and, and with a more intense and aggressive, um, you know, approach to, to building a business and so that's what we did and so 2017 you you launch uh, a cityscape and uh it's it's 2020 now so you know how has that one project that you found that spearheaded the the launch uh how has that snowballed it snowballed um in a in an exponential way so we launched the one project we they the same private equity firm saw it and we we're demonstrating return told us to go get another project we got that one we're on a third or fourth project right now um then we got into broadband development and and reoccurring revenue through a, a middle georgia broadband initiative that we're owners of then we got into hotel development that we're currently uh on the back end of signing development agreement with a municipality for 
Um, so we started diversifying, and 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 then we got into multifamily with a co-developer. We built our first, we're building our first multifamily project right now, uh, uh, tax credit, nine uh, percent tax credit project. So it really snowballed beyond our belief, and you know to some extent we just wanted to create some cash flow. But then we started seeing that we're building a business uh, that is very much so sustainable. It's in a healthy market. It's under supply. Uh, um, and then it's a, it's, a, it's a ton of demand. And so this market and this go round is significantly much better. Um, we're trending twice the amount of houses in year one, two, and three than we did initially. And so we're on this kind of a super growth um, uh, journey right now with this company. So, um, but we're still looking at other ways to diversify and, and ensure that we don't, you know, have a, uh, you know, be in a position where we're just, one dimensional. You know. And so what advice would you give to the would be uh, entrepreneur who is getting ready to launch out uh, and do their own thing? Um, one is, you know, Plato says the first and most important victory is to conquer oneself. And I think a lot of times, you know, in partnerships uh, or just in general in creating deal flow, you got to remove your ego and greed from the table. And I think, you know, deals work partnerships work when you do that um so you know and then just to never compromise your principles you know uh, at this point i don't compromise my health or my family for no reason and and just making sure that you know uh you, you understand the demands of of what entrepreneurship is going to be and what it's going to have upon you and and come up with your own uh way to make sure that you're satisfying the demands of a business but you're also not compromising the things that bring happiness and health to you. Well said. You have just listened to Rob Jones of Cityscape Housing. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, make sure you follow us at Give Them the Business Podcast on social media. I'm Troy Evans, reminding you to Troy Harder. And if you want to leave me a comment, I can be found on social media at I am Troy D. Evans. Thanks for listening to the show, and we'll see you next time.